In this episode, we will review Mr. Mahogany Surfacer, mask the model with liquid mask, paint three color camo with modulation, make scratches with chipping medium, and we will talk about filtering. <laughs> Hey, those Chinese mixers are pretty powerful tools. Ok, it's time to paint the model in 3 color camouflage. And this is where we enter right away with a product to present, Model Degreaser. One of our best sellers which I'm a little surprised about, because most modelers consider washing liquid water to be sufficient. But on the other hand not, because the product is really powerful. How much it degreases and nullifies any danger of priming, chipping, flaking or dotting pays off in the future with no unforeseen problems. I know that quite a few people already have one in the shelf. Still, by making my own videos, I have the opportunity to give a little hint on how to properly work with this product. The simplest method of washing the model to not damage anything is to clean the model with a brush using the technique known in car detailing as onto buckets. In our case, containers. <laughs> we wipe the plastic with the degreaser, then rinse the brush in one container and then clean fluid from the other. And the result? Just look at the tracks. I need this increased adhesion because the primer that I'm going to lay down, which is Mr. Mahogany Surfacer, will also serve as scratches color on the model. The chipping medium will come directly over the primer, so the adhesion of the primer is crucial here. As for Surfacer 1000, diluted with their own leveling thinner, it lays down like a gold. At the same time, the dark brown color is perfect for skipping the shading step under the green, brown or sand colors. I extensively described the choice of Mr. Hobby Primer itself in an article for patrons on my website, so I won't elaborate here too much. Maybe instead I will motivate you to donate the development of the channel with the cost of a small coffee or with purchases in our online store. Then you will get access to the articles for free to the best modeling chemistry on the market. Suffice should be diluted a lot. With me, the ratio of one part primer to five parts leveling thinner always worked perfectly. At the same time, I put out that I paint on low pressure of about 15 psi and always put thin transport layers. I do this for two reasons. First, I avoid flooding the details this way so they won't be fuzzy, but sharp and clear. Secondly, laying down the thin coats gives the effect more matte because, unfortunately, leveling thinner like any with large dose of retarder will gloss the paints. The thicker the coating, the greater the risk that the gloss will come out, which with a primer will be problematic. By the way, the same relationship applies to clear varnishes, which we put on already painted. Applying surfacer in thin layers even exposes any sanding marks. At the same time, it's sometimes the case that to paint hard to reach areas, you are forced to paint some details quite juicy along the way. Fortunately, the primer levels out very well and even though you flood the pieces a bit, it will evaporate of course, I will be honest, and I admit that I sometimes make exceptions to this rule. There are places where I don't have to care as much about the level of the detail because they will most simply be covered. Basically, the entire top surface of the vignette, or as here the links of the tank tracks, are surfaces that will be covered by a layer of earth and mud. So I speed up a bit. The time saved can be spent on procrastination. <laughs> Just to round off this such a little review or quite on Mr. Hobby surfaces, a few words about cleaning the equipment afterward. 
This can be done really easy if you have a right cleaning chemistry. I use Total Cleaner for pre-cleaning as, as the name says, the cleaning is total. That is, if you drop an eyebrush in some cleft in the ground and it will lay there with dried paint for 4000 years, after which some new civilization from the future will dig it up, they could wash it with total in seconds. Herbcare Cleaner has a slightly different job. He shines and preserves the metal coatings, repelling moisture particles and preventing patination. We know that every guy likes to have a polished gun, right? See for yourself, it shines like a dog's ball. The choice of colors fell on Tamiya. The bases for the primary shades are red brown, desert yellow and olive green, modulated with the red or white palette of brightening colors. But first, chipping medium, which I already mentioned it, right? Uh, when activated with water, this agent will weaken the paint layer and even work with lacquers. I apply a fairly thick coating, but do not flood the model. Using a primer that will perfectly match the color of the chipping, I skip an extra coat of paint in the color of the chipping, right? This is one less layer on the model. A layer that, as it were, is an extra layer covering the details. Here the savings may pay off, because let's remember that there will be two more layers of camouflage colors, each additionally modulated to three shades. It comes out that up to six layers of paint will be put on chipping medium. All in all, I'm wondering at this point how crazy an idea this is and whether our easy chipping medium will ever get through this paint. Also, having a dark brown primer as a base, I skip the next layer typically used, which is shadows. Here the primer itself is already a shadow. Instead, I diluted the Tamiya 1 to 5 as before to make it quite transparent. I painted the model's body right from the top. I'm doing so, I don't try to cover the shaded areas completely, but give the mist only. At first, I painted a layer with desert yellow alone and then gently lightened this color with white. Of course, remember to keep proportions with the thinner. And yes, I know, the haters already warm up their keyboards. Do not brighten up with white. Relax, this is intentional. Of course, white in excess causes the color to fade out and visually make it flat. But that was my goal, as the model is meant to be base for dust painting. Moreover, I will still pull out some color with filters, but we will get to that. However, speaking of mental health of keyboard haters, I will point out that the best for highlighting greens and browns are yellow with a touch of a white or their derivatives like egg or buff. They cause visual warming and brightening of colors. Well, but let's back to my idea of this model. With first highlight color, I am painting a bit higher in the zenithal direction, avoiding places where shadow naturally occurs. As with the previous color I painted the horizontal surfaces almost entirely, here I am already focusing on selected panels. However, it's not like I am sticking to the Spanish color modulation rules. You will see in a moment. This camouflage third and final color is already white tinted with desert yellow diluted with lots of leveling tin. Mentioning the book's color modulation, of course, we know that, except maybe for its zenithal option, it is always a shift away from realism for a wow effect. It is more to emphasize panels and shapes than to imitate true reflections. I am continuing this thought here, but in my own way. While painting, I am already planning the next step, weathering the model. I apply the faded, almost white color from the outside of the panels, building up a dust base, and in the dark areas I will paint dirt with oil washes. If the painting goes hand in hand with the weathering, the effect will be intensified, which I'm hoping for. But the weathering of the model will be in the next episode, so this is just a little spoiler, and for now, let's get back to the painting.
By the way, I find out that the latest paint mixture is perfect to paint myself socks. Mm, well, the ones for the diorama, of course. I choose a liquid mask from Palejo to mask the model for painting camouflage spots. I could use masking tape and cutting out the individual shapes, but curiosity and going for the easy way won out. I was also curious to see if it would be possible to use a liquid mask on a model with chipping medium applied, which is, after all, a liquid, and the medium activates in contact with water. And here are the color mixes I prepared. For the first shot, olive green alone. As the first highlight and modulation intermediate color, I mixed it with yellow green and the same mixture with a lot of white for the third shot. Here I have to be consistent and paint with a similar technique and similar places to make the camouflage compatible. The brown color is red brown alone, then red brown with above, and again the last color, a considerable amount of white. In this way I will paint again and again, all in one time without washing the eyebrush. Painting with Tamiya goes just smoothly as with Mr. Hobby Primer, but it's all due to leveling thinner. And it's not that this thinner has no cons, oh no. It's just that a very large number of retarders provide a high comfort of work. At the same time, you have to be careful not to flood the model and stubbornly dry each layer with airbrush air alone or with a hair dry. But the quality of the coating is, as they say, idiot proof. That is, even if you paint without much thought how to actually have your equipment set up, the paint will start lay down more or less well. Compared to water-based acrylics, even major mishaps can't destroy our work. Because speaking of misfortunes... Of course, I didn't want to put the cover on the cap and the worst happened. But in this case there is no need to panic, I gently dry it so it doesn't run off and while the paint is still wet, I offer paint the edges of this strap to visually blur the whole thing. There is so much thinner in the paint the mixture that all the paint has leveled out nicely. I must admit that this is my first model entirely painted with Tamiya. I was for a long time painting with testers or a Gansey. Later I put just MIG acrylics, letting me get caught up with cool sets, but painting them with an airbrush was a torment. To Tamiya indeed we can have this objection that the palette of the colors is by modeling standards extremely poor. But painting with these paints on MLT is a child's play. As a manufacturer of modeling chemistry I must also say that it's a good thing for a beginner to combine colors in their mixing. It forces you to learn about hues and the relationship between them. It introduces a creative and artistic approach to making models. This can really pay off in the hobby. And I'm not making a statement here that these are the best paints for painting plastic models, but probably the most optimal such a golden mean of modelers needs. The golden mean doesn't seem to be a liquid mask when it comes to taking it off. Yes, applying the mask is a snap compared to masking with the tape. However, taking off this mask was so long and tedious that I had a lot of time to think about my life. From large flat areas, cool, but chiseling the mask out of details can make it so that when you are done, you will find out that your girlfriend no longer recognizes you. But, now I have got very sharp transitions, which is what I want. No paint undercuts like with masking tape or fuzzy edges like with masking party. All that's left to do is to sand down the rigid edges after removing the latex and you are done. The next step is to activate the chipping medium and make chipping. Normally this should be done just after painting the mod. In my case this was after 4 days. I soaked the paint with hot water and surprisingly the sand color was still scratchable quite easy but definitely with more resistance than usual when I followed the mentioned time frame. It is worth preparing all sorts of tools for mayhem. Soft brushes for suture operations, wire brushes and sharp picks for scratches. 
making chipping with a medium is in my opinion the easiest and the most realistic method of reproducing damage to your vehicle's paint finish. After all it's real abrasions. The first time you do it you need to get the feel for how the medium reacted with your paint. It can always be slightly different even on various panels depending on the thickness of the individual coatings. Our medium is strong so it's easy to overdo it. For this reason the good idea is to choose spot that will be covered with something anyway, for example in dust. Speaking of coating thickness, of course, the green and brown paint areas are twice as many layers of paint. And this is where the difficulty began, especially since several days has passed and the Tamiya had chemically cured. On the other hand, it is natural. On the real tank, scratches to bare steel or primer will occur far less often in these places. Much more often only the paint that was underneath. Here I must emphasize what our patrons who follow the articles on the progress of building this model on Models World already knew. Of course I'm logically trying to do less upholstery here and more there. But I'm also clearly overdoing the chipping here regarding its quantity and volume. I'm doing this because I want to give the model a pretty solid dusting and mudding in the next stage, so about 80% of this work will be covered. In general it's a bit like that in model weather. You create many extensive effects covering the previous one in part of whole. But the amount of details and special effects here and there make the final complete effect. There is one more such special ahead. But now a commercial break. And if you have made it to this point I would like to thank you first. Our channel is a fresh project and I hope it will grow and I will be able to publish new videos with as much frequency as possible. I won't deny that running a business in this industry and as the owner of the Modeless World brand, I'm concerned not only with providing education and entertainment but also with the company's development in these difficult times, especially in businesses in Poland. So if you think it's worth supporting us, you can do so by becoming a patron of this channel. You will read all about everything on our online platform where you can find our product store and a blog with all the content just for patrons. There you will also read more about the details, I hope that with your help we can create a channel of the quality which our products are famous for. And one thing more, you will get access to the basic content for patrons for a month free with every product purchase you will make from our website. Remember we sell with direct shipping worldwide, so no matter where are you from, you can support modeling culture and our modelers world. Thank you. Now it's right time to place the filters. Apply them to optically harmonize the whole. The filters give depth and common tonality to these colors, which are different but on the same vehicle operated together. Modeler's World Ultimate filters are the top shelf of this type of product and this is a note, they are acrylic filters. Although the quality of working with them reassembles oil paints. They do not leave any brush marks and they are easy to work with. I worked for a long time on the formula of this product and I am very proud of it. I apply filters to the entire surfaces of individual panels but not one color for the whole model. Here I use the sunlight yellow filter on horizontal surfaces directly illuminated by the sun, giving them a warm luminous atmosphere. For vertical surfaces, I use the reddish brown but also in warm shade to visually darken them and enhance contrast. The filters like our oil washes are subtle and delicate and do not require cleaning or dilution. This allows us to gradate the effect until we are satisfied. In my case it was two coats for each color. A huge advantage of the fact that they are acrylics is that we don't need to apply clear varnish after them before the wash. Again we save one coat and time. If I had used oil filters and laid down the wash without protecting it with acrylics, everything would have started to blend. We can apply the second layer after a moment when the first layer is already dry to the eye. I helped myself with a hair dryer and applying these two filters took no more than 5 minutes. 
The technique is somewhat reminiscent of the so-called glazing from scale modeling. Allay quite wet layers and if necessary collect the excess with the same brush after a while. And what is the difference between before and after? Let these two photos illustrate this for you. And that would be enough for today's episode. I will paint the figures in the next one and the weathering and complete diorama will come. And if you want to stay up to date and preview the progress where you will find even more information, become our customer or buy Python separately. Instead of, for example, ice cream from McDonald's, you will learn more and not get fat in the process. And if you want to be mentioned here in the video like our super or hyper patrons and get access to premium articles, check our website. You will find the links in the description.